If you're thinking that you're going to punch hard, guess what happens? You end up punching hard as well. If you spend any length of time watching professional boxing, you will sometimes see a boxer flaring their elbow in what pro mechanics experts would have you believe is a useless telegraph before blasting their arm. The biomechanics of the cross punch has been investigated by biomechanics experts out of the University of Tehran in Iran. These biomechanics experts have put forward an explanation for as to how and why this flaring of the elbow occurs. In order to understand why this flaring of the elbow occurs and why you may not wish to work against your body's natural intuitive mechanics, you may want to consider if you are asked to jump as high as possible exactly what jump mechanics you would use. In order for the max jump height to be achieved, I think it's true to say most people would optimally achieve it with a run and a jump. However, equally, if you're asked to jump as high as you can on the spot, then I think most people would likely sink down before jumping back up. There may be several reasons why you would sink down before jumping back up. However, there is a simple test you can do for yourself which will help you understand the concept of elastic energy. If you measure how high you can jump on the spot following your body's natural mechanics, then after observing the leg depth which you achieve naturally, try a second jump, this time pausing in the middle of the sink down before jumping back up movement. You will find that you can't jump as high. So almost everyone on the planet will intuitively use some form of elastic energy when trying to jump as high as possible, even if they are not consciously aware of it. So moving back to the example of the boxer's punch, the biomechanics experts find there is some degree of preloading, or you could say arm cocking, where the fist and arm assume a more biomechanically favorable position in the first half of the punch in order to use elastic energy in the second half of the punch. So to refer to the paper, you can see the title on screen here kinematics of straight right punch. You can also find a link in the description to it. It's an open access paper so anyone can read it. Looking at some key points from the study, the participants were eight right-handed males, either current or former members of the Iranian national boxing team. A detractor may say that as the study was not done on elite level professionals, then it's not relevant. However, if you look at Floyd Mayweather's straight right on screen, then you can see that he assumes a flared elbow position at some points whilst throwing the punch. I think it's widely known that an overhand right punch will involve a bent elbow at some points during the punch. However, if you look at some of Mayweather's right hands, even what would be considered a straight right hand does not involve a completely linear A to B trajectory. As to why the flared elbow effect occurs, looking at this excerpt from the paper, they mentioned that it involves a more efficient transfer of energy which is produced by trunk rotation, aka core rotation. A lot of people talk about full body punching. A factor that a lot of people fail to realize is that it takes a time delay of about a tenth of a second for the energy to transfer through the body from the legs to the extremity of the fist. If you think about it logically, by the time the energy produced by the legs is at the level of the core, it becomes rotational in nature. So to convert this rotational energy into a straight right punch may not be a completely efficient process. This may be where the flaring of the elbow effect occurs in order to produce the most efficient energy transfer. I'm not going to get too heavy on the physics side of it, as to be honest, I don't completely understand it. Ultimately though, the biomechanics experts are saying that a less efficient punch trajectory than could simply go from A to B will help with full body power punching. Looking at this further excerpt from the paper, to quote, data acquisition indicates that boxers flesh joints partially, especially the elbow joint at the onset of the punch cycle, which is against their objective to perform the task in minimum time and with no additional movements, and thus avoiding intent advertisement. You have to remember that this study is translated from Iranian into English. So a phrase like intent advertisement would likely be replaced with telegraph if it was written by a combat sports fan from the West. The underlying point is that once again it's noted that if the punch were simply to travel from A to B with no regard for power, then the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. 
However, once you factor in power, then a less efficient trajectory may conserve kinetic energy produced elsewhere in the body. This further quote illustrates the point about punching power. To quote, while amateur boxers in the current study try to target their opponent from further distances and emphasize high punch velocity, the pro boxers attempt to deliver a heavier punch from close quarters. To do so, and also to compensate punch impulse because of lower fist velocity, the professional heavyweight boxer delivered the punch with more elbow flexion to increase punch effective mass by transferring more body momentum. I've shown some right hands at various points already in the video. Here you can see another right hand from Floyd Mayweather. It involves a flexion of the elbow which draws the fist towards Mayweather's body before the elbow extends towards the target. In another right hand here you can see the right hand retracts towards Mayweather's body with the left hand extending towards the target. This essentially forms what you could call an arm cocking phase before the arm blasts towards the target. Another professional boxer lands a knockdown punch here. Of course, it's harder to see from this angle, but if you pay attention or pause and rewatch, you can make out that the counter movement precedes the arm blast. In this scenario from Mayweather, there is a stance switch which I don't think generates any elastic energy and really precedes the punch cycle which begins with the legs driving into the ground. If you focus on the right arm you can make out the counter movement which precedes the arm blast. In this case full arm extension is not achieved which I think is more because of the opponent's unpredictable movements rather than Mayweather intending to throw a right hook or an overhand right. Looking at a southpaw this time with Tank Davis you can see the same concepts that apply to the orthodox straight right. The left hand begins with the punch drawing back away from the target, which seems illogical at surface value, considering that the ultimate goal is to go towards the target. After an initial counter movement, the punch blasts towards the target. If you saw these left hands in real time, I think it's very likely that they would be recognized as straight left hands as opposed to overhand lefts. You can see the three-dimensional model of the punch displayed here. Another factor which I haven't focused on too much here is the rotation of the fist from a vertical to a horizontal position. A factor in the boxes which is criticized rather than observed in this case is the length of time the fist takes to return to the start position. You can see a graph on screen here which compares the speed of the fist in the phase of the punch being thrown and then returning to the start position. So in conclusion, whilst the punch with the flared elbow does offer some degree of telegraphing the punch, it also conserves energy produced elsewhere in the body. I've included some examples in the video of pro boxers who are considered technicians throwing punches which begin with this flared elbow. It is also possible to find examples of punches being thrown with a straighter trajectory. However, in terms of training time, Spending an excessively large amount of time doing slow motion walkthroughs to iron out this flared elbow effect may not be the best use of training time. I'm going to finish the video with a quote from Tony Jeffries who was an Olympic level boxer. If you remember from earlier the biomechanics team stated the flared elbow effect was an intuitive subconscious adaption. Jeffries likely isn't a biomechanics expert who can explain everything that is going on in his body. Oh, he mentions that when he thinks about punching harder, he finds he actually does punch harder. If you're thinking that you're going to punch hard, guess what happens? You end up punching hard as well. 